We found out that there have been times this morning where the site's been running more s slowly than it normally will. The reason is because more than one million people visited healthcare.gov before 7 in the morning. To put that in context, there were five times more users in the marketplace this morning than have ever been on Medicare.gov at one time. And we're going to be speeding things up in the next few hours to handle all this demand that exceeds anything that we had expected. It is true that what's happened is the website got over it is true that what's happened is the website got overwhelmed by the volume and folks are working around the clock and have been systematically reducing the wait times. The problem has been that the website that's supposed to make it easy to apply for and purchase the insurance is not working the way it should for everybody. And there's no sugarcoating it. The website has been too slow. People have been getting stuck during the application process. I want the cash registers to work. I want the, ch the checkout lines to be smooth. So I want people to be able to get this great product. And there's no excuse for the problems. Well, there is growing evidence of chaos behind the scenes as the government kept changing requirements for the health care website and reports that experts building the site were begging for a delay in its launch. A small-scale test crashed the system just days before launch. And our next guest says that that failure proves the website was broken and the administration knew it, but decided to go ahead and launch anyway. John McCormick is a staff writer for the Weekly Standard who's been taking a look at all of this. We just heard in that report from Molly Henneberg, we heard uh, Jay Carney, the White House spokesman, saying the best minds are being applied to repair the damage. Why weren't the best minds called in in the first place to get this thing launched? Well, there are a lot of unanswered questions. You know, the administration had three and a half years since this law was passed. They spent hundreds of millions of dollars on a website. And it's not suffering from just simply a few glitches or a few kinks. The website's broken, and that's three weeks after uh, the website was supposed to go live. Today, as, as you noted, the Washington Post reported that a few hundred people was all it took to crash the website days before it went live. So the administration knew they've been saying that it's been overwhelming demand, this crushing volume of interest, and the website is what's taken it down. But we know it's not millions, it's not even hundreds of thousands or thousands. A few hundred people simply crashed the website days before, but the administration decided to go ahead anyway. The big question now is why. Right, and the, and the idea was that they wanted to build a website that would allow 50 to 60,000 people at a time to get on and enroll. They did this demo and a couple hundred people got on and crashed it. Exactly, and they knew from, from previous programs, Medicare Part D, the prescription drug program, that the kind of volume that they should have expected, and it simply failed a very minor test. I think that no one really expected we'd be here debating whether or not the government could get a website to work after hundreds of millions of dollars in three years. I think people thought we'd be debating the merits of the law, but right now we're simply debating whether or not people can get online and, and buy this product. Well, we've also heard, I mean, there are you know, some number of hundreds, maybe thousands of people who've signed up from the website but there are also thousands of people who have lost their private health insurance policies because they don't, comp uh, they don't uh, comport with the requirements of Obamacare. Exactly. Once we get past all these technical questions, uh, the president's still going to have to answer all these broken promises that people were told they could keep their health insurance if they liked it. We've got reports of hundreds of thousands of Americans losing their health insurance because it doesn't comply with the requirements of the Affordable Care Act. We've also got many, many reports right now of people seeing their, their premiums skyrocket by as much as $10,000 a year for a family of four in some cases.